What's up guys and welcome to today's video. As I mentioned before with Colette, we did have some big news and as you can see by the title and the thumbnail of this video, it isn't necessarily great news. Now underneath the cover is the remains of the GT350. Unfortunately, an incident did happen when we went to the firm and Colette was driving a few weeks back. I did decide to withhold the footage just because I didn't want to put the footage up and cause a bunch of drama and make it look like I'm calling someone out or whatever. I just want to let you guys know before we play the video, between Ford, the dealership that did the last service on the car, and insurance, I knew it was going to be kind of a complicated situation and I wanted to make sure all that was ironed out before I put the footage on YouTube as it may have made this a much more complicated situation than it already was. So thankfully, Colette is okay and thankfully she does have footage of everything that transpired and before we chat any more about it, I'm going to play that right now. Yeah, Mr. 
stuff in our glove box. Got it. Do you guys want me to put the truck and push it off track? So that? Yeah. Fuck the track up? Because if it's going to catch the fire, I don't want to fuck the track up. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to catch this. Well, I don't know if you want me to push it down there, is what I'm saying. I mean, is that a risk with it being that close to the grass? I mean, we'd have it off the oil. As long as we're sitting there, I think we'll be fine. I was going to have to These are good. These are good. Yeah, I just grabbed them. Thank you, guys. Yeah, do we want to try to open the hood or no? No, no it, it keeps lighting off. No. No. and give this car a lot of shit and now that's kind of not funny anymore. Yeah. Um, oh man, this is really bad. I feel awful. Uh, it was basically my third time out on track. Literally just starting to drive the car hard. <sighs> I think it was maybe lap, what? Maybe lap four, my third time out and basically right back there you downshift to second coming through the s's it just blew up like it, it was a massive bang and i saw a ton of white smoke immediately started pulling off track obviously and um after i pulled off i saw a really big flame and i thought again it was like just another boom and the flame went away obviously pulled out got out turned the car off and yeah all right so i knowingly took the risk letting you drive the car that something would happen i thought you might go off track or spin out or potentially go into a wall like worst case scenario i didn't think it would catch fire um i'm yeah. regretting not checking the oil filter first the dealer was the last place to touch it and i physically had the thought this morning maybe i should put a hand on the oil filter and just double check it it seems like the same thing that happened last time the oscillations from the flat plane vibrated the oil filter loose she lost oil car caught fire luckily she's okay i'm sorry Colette. yeah i mean i'm sorry because i feel like we've joked about this car a lot and like now it's not funny anymore and it's pretty much the worst thing that could have ever happen. So. To, to, to like be completely honest, I'm not super, super upset. I really think that Ford will make good with this. It's a known issue. We've had the problem before. I've spoken to the dealer about it. But On you top said of that, this happened last time? Yeah, you're, you're okay. They said we were not gonna shut the track down, which I'm very happy about because I didn't want the rest of the people's track day to get ruined. Um, really, I think this is best case scenario for like, you know, I would rather this happen than you put it in a wall of beer. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I guess. At least that's like, I don't know. It just sucks because there wasn't even, there wasn't a warning ahead of time. I mean, I guess after like looking back, you said after I left, there was like a small. When you when you called me and you said the car is on fire, I hopped in the Evo, drove over, saw where you were stopped at the rig, 
there was a small little pool of oil. So if I was being diligent and checking the car between sessions, I might have been able to catch it. But between sessions is crazy because I went out twice with like still easy laps. And when I say I went out twice, maybe twice, three to five laps, twice. And this is my third time out, maybe fourth lap, just starting to drive it harder. And there was no lead up, warning sign, whatever. Like back here on the technical side, second gear, it just, massive explosion and tons of smoke coming out i pull off another like mini explosion and with fire and like the fire built up slowly we just didn't have enough extinguishers to fully put it out and it just to be fair when you when you called me and you said bring fire extinguishers i thought that you were just having like a panic attack and the fire wasn't actually that bad and you just it didn't start off that bad but yeah. it was unable to be put out like it just grew slowly so Is your life back i don't know I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm, I'm literally like texting the people that I know through Ford right now. I'm fairly confident that like Ford's really, really great. I've had a great relationship with Ford and I really think they'll make good on the situation. So don't beat yourself up. You're okay. But Check. it's still me. I was still the one driving. Like that's what it just is. Oh, yeah. No, they definitely warned you. It was a girl driving. It's because it wasn't neon. It's because it was gray. Too soon. It's not funny. I feel like I also just didn't know how much of a risk this was. Like, I know you talked about it, and you said this has happened before, and it's a defect, but like... I mean, like, I, didn't, I, I didn't think it was gonna happen before, again. I mean, I, I, I literally was time. not, that's what, like, then why, I just don't understand why now, like, I wasn't even driving hard until just now. Like, right before it went, yes, I was starting to get on it for two laps in a row. Like, I'm so, The I'm just vibrations confused. from the high RPM at long periods of time is what vibrates the filter loose. I wasn't the last person to touch the filter on that car. It was a dealer. I'm not going to name the dealer. There's a good chance that they didn't torque it down properly. You know, they might not work with GT350s enough to know that it's a very significant problem to the point where the dealers even issue their recall, even though they switched to a cartridge filter on the newer, like 2019s, 2018 ones. Um, on the older ones, they won't give you a cartridge setup for it. They give you a torque wrench. So there's a good chance that it just wasn't torqued down properly. Um, and that's why it happened. And you said last time when this happened to you though, you had a warning because there was oil dripping on your brakes and you lost brakes first and then you checked it or? So I was going down the back straight. My brakes got coated on oil on one side. I went off track. I was like, hmm, this is weird. Driving, looking at my gauges and everything. Instantly low oil pressure light came on, turned the car off, went off track and was able to catch it. The thing is the car was probably much hotter because you've been driving it more. When I did it, it was in the beginning. Yeah. So the oil, when it hit the manifold for me, didn't catch fire. For you, it was probably so hot because you're driving way better than me that it caught fire. Yeah. Oh, this is the first glimpse. Oh my God. I'm just trying to think if, uh, uh, it's hard to tell like chassis damage wise, it might make a good drift car. Yeah, maybe. That is, that's bad. It's, it's written, that's crazy, huh? As as well. It's written off, it's all that plastic just catches on fire. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely totaled for sure. Yeah. But I'm just thinking buying it back from the auction, maybe making it into a drift car. That'd be fun. Awesome drift car. Ah, I definitely didn't see today going like this. You want me to start her up? <laughs> oh, the clutch pedal doesn't work. I don't know. Hey, I still got brake pressure. You say you still got brake pressure? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so you can stop then. You don't have to run into me. <laughs> Not the first time I've been pulled off track in this thing. Boy, does it reek this time, though. I'm just happy everyone's okay. I know that I should be more upset about this, and, huh, sad him. Honestly, I know, like, we can piece together what happened, but still, when you're the one, still, when you're the one driving, like, I still feel like, I don't know, there's something I should have done. I don't know, it just sucks. So it's real bad. Well, it was a few thousand dollars for all the fire extinguishers and sand they had to use to clean up the track. But I got to keep my souvenir. Oh no, it's starting to rain. I wanna go do a couple more laps in the U before we have to leave.
the hood pop still worked. But I think the fancy firemen wanted to use their fireman tools so they could like. It was pretty cool, but I mean. The, the I bumper would have been totally fine. Like if. I was gonna sell this hood on Yahoo Auctions Japan. Some stupid American kid. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't even think we'd be loading anything in the trailer, if I'm honest. Like, how it started. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I totally thought it was burned down. I, got, I literally yelled at her. I was like, yo, get your stuff out of the car because this bitch is burning to the ground, dude. <laughs> you did. <laughs> it's going to be so sad if this, this video never makes the light of day. I know. Like, that would kind of bum me out because I feel like it'd be a really good video. But people always make fun of me because, like, they, they say I'm too happy and bad things happen and I'm, like, not grateful. But it's just the like the attitude and the way that I go about it. Like I can't. There's no point in being upset. Like what's done is done. But people mistake that as me just being like ungrateful for nice things or like not knowing the value of things. But I, I always try to set an example and like not throw a hissy fit. Yeah. What a wild situation, but uh, just very, very thankful that everyone's okay, and we had the awesome staff at the firm, and unfortunately, we are going to be uncovering what is left of the GT350. Now, before I talk about it any further, I wanna quickly uh, give our best effort of pushing this into the shop so we have a little bit better lighting. We can go over what happened and come up with a plan moving forward for the GT350. All right, so now that the GT350 is in the shop, we can chat a little bit about what happened and what we're gonna do. So immediately, right after it happened, we did not touch the car, we put it on the lift to inspect and see if what I predicted happened actually did indeed happen with the car. When we put it on the lift, I'll show you the footage of us first discovering what happened. All right, Alberto, what have you found? I got that oil filled with our gasket. Oh, it's the same thing as last time. You just split out the gasket to the side. Yep. So that means probably... Shine the light a little lower, please. Shine the light a little lower so you can see the, yep. Oh, the filter doesn't even feel loose. Really? It's, well, yeah, it's, but the gasket might it's have. It's tight, but the gasket failed on it. Damn. First reaction, middle oh of the clip. Oh my God. It looks like Play-Doh. So I guess you, you can actually, you wanna, would you mind helping like by holding the camera? Cause then we can have a little bit of a narrative and it'll make this a lot easier sure. for me. I All like right. your hood prop. Thanks, it was the nicest one. I thought it suited the build. Where's the stock one? Okay, so I don't know if I explained this to you. Oh, yeah, I'm a little crooked there. Sorry. I'm a little crooked there, guy. You all right? <laughs> so, same thing that happened before. If you guys remember last time, what happened was the oil filter backed off on track. And it actually failed where it pushed the seal out and it sprayed down onto the ground, lost oil pressure, turned the car off. Everything was fine. From that point moving forward, I decided, all right, you know, I spoke to Ford. It was a known thing where they have a specific torque spec for the filter. So I said, you know what? I don't want this to happen again. I'm not going to change the oil in this car anymore. I'm going to take it to the dealer. So the dealer is the last place to change the oil on the car. From my understanding, it was torque to spec, but the harmonics from this engine revving so high just ends up backing the filter off. The filter fails, it pushes the seal out, and then in this case, unfortunately, rather than spraying down, it sprayed up, hit the headers, and then basically ignited the whole car on fire just from hitting the hot exhaust. So like I said, I immediately got in contact with Ford. I reached out to the dealer, I reached out to insurance, and I was like freaking out because this isn't just, you know, like a cheap 240 catching on fire. This is an expensive car that was a new car. And I was freaking out a little bit and I didn't want to put up the YouTube video and then cause a bunch of drama and then have these companies upset that they have bad PR, whatever. I really like Ford. I'm a big Ford fan. I still think this is one of the best cars made on the market right now, the biggest bang for your buck. I love my trucks. So I wanted to reach some sort of resolution and I will say like right off the bat, it was very easy for me to get a hold of someone. They're super understanding, super professional. Everyone kind of got together and uh, a resolution was reached that I'm not allowed to disclose with this car. And I will say I was given the option to keep the car. I did choose to keep the car. I don't know if it's going to be salvageable, you know, 
In tomorrow's video, we're gonna tear it apart, see if uh, you know anything salvageable left of the long block, see if the frame's damaged, I don't know. I don't know if this car's gonna end up being a part out, if it's past the point of return, or maybe you could swap it. I think swapping would be pretty cool, but uh, if, until we start ripping this thing, it's gonna be really hard to figure that out. I will say, when we start turning it into tomorrow, me and Tommy were just chatting, like, it would be awesome if it was salvageable and I could retain kind of all the patina from the fire and everything. It's a bummer that the hood had to be cut open, but I understand why they do that. When there's a fire, if you open up the hood, it kind of all goes in your face. So that's why they did it with the big chompy things. But um, it looks like pretty much everything in this bay is done. I just don't know like how the fire impacts the structural rigidity of the frame, the chassis and everything up here. You know what's gonna be sick though, Tommy? If this, this bar hanging on the wall. Oh, hell yeah. How rad is you that? You know one thing they can't get in the camera is what? how this thing smells. Oh, it stinks. Ugh, horrible. Dude, my trailer stunk for like weeks. Really? Yeah. It's rough. Poor Colette, man, dude. She oh, was yeah, shaking up. I feel so bad for Colette. The car is dead, okay? Colette's fine. This thing was fun to drive, except I'd try to pull you in the woods every time. <laughs> I drove it down the street. Now, I wasn't planning on releasing this information this soon, but uh, unfortunately I'm dumb and there were clips of it in the parking lot undercover and people started assuming stuff was up with it. Uh, Colette really wanted to be here for the reveal of what happened just because it did shake her up so much and it was a really big deal to her. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna FaceTime her real quick and see what she has to say about it. All right guys, we are being joined by Colette from the future. Say hello, Colette. Today's the day we have to talk about this, huh? We don't have to. So we uh, we really wanted to be together when I had to make this video. Um, some of us in different ways than others. If you catch my drift. What? They'll understand what I meant by that. But anyway, um, so I have a few questions for you. But before I have any questions, do you have anything you want to say or your uh, lovely dog named Rally in your lap? Oh yeah, my dog's here for support to re-talk about this traumatic moment. Um, no, it just, it sucked, and I forgot how bad it sucked until we were going through all the footage and remembering everything, because I think I just, like, blacked out, and somehow got all that content for you, which I want to get acknowledged for, like, in a moment of crisis, I kept the camera rolling for you, like, I worked, and I got what was happening, and... You're welcome. So that was actually one of my bullet points. I put together a, a little list of uh, questions and comments that I had for her, and one of my last ones was indeed thanking you, because in a moment of crisis, uh, it may have been looked at by some people as, oh, you know, why was she filming and not doing this or not doing that, but like, as a oh, YouTuber, as a YouTuber, that is the most valuable thing that she could have been doing in that moment. You know, this is a huge video. It was probably one of the craziest things that's ever happened with one of my cars. So it is very much so appreciated. Um, and I was just complimenting earlier, you're sh basically a tripod with how smooth your shots are, so. Um, yeah, wouldn't call me a tripod, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I just felt so awful. And like, I didn't comprehend like fully what was happening. And the only thing running through my head was like, if his car is going to burn to the ground, I'm at least going to get it on video so he can have something to post. And like, I don't know. I just, I was freaking out inside and I feel like I was freaking out a lot more than you. So I don't even remember like a lot of the footage too. When I was looking back over it, I didn't even remember filming like half of it. So quick disclaimer, um, they're seeing a C that is my desktop right now. And it is extremely embarrassing. I wasn't aware that I wouldn't be able to cover it up with another window. And I don't know if you see my desktop Colette, but there's about 500 different icons on it. And it definitely says a lot about a person, so. All right, I have a list of questions and I'm gonna hammer you with the first one. This is a very simple one. Have you ever been in a car on fire before? No, which I think is why it was more traumatic and I was kind of freaking out more on the inside because I've been racing for almost a decade and I've never had a car catch on fire. I've been flipped off like 11 foot tall ramp. I've been shoved into a wall at like 120 never anything to do with fire and i definitely feel like as a racing driver that's like one of the biggest fears given like this wasn't an intense scenario it's not like it caught fire and like blew inside the cabin or anything like really intense it was actually a really slow fire but i think just watching the car and slowly engulf in flames and there being nothing i could do about it and me having been the last person to drive it 
and it being in your car, like I, it was just not okay. I was, I was freaking out a lot. So, yeah. Speaking of a slow fire, I also uh, neglected to give an adequate enough shout out to all the staff at the firm and the other drivers that were there help contain the fire because everyone gave all their personal extinguishers out of the car. We used every single fire extinguisher that the firm had. They were amazingly helpful, made sure everyone was okay, and we were able to contain the fire that probably would have been much worse and hold it down until the actual fire department got there. We got, we got really lucky, like every single a signature they had was used from the other drivers too. And I think someone mentioned like we got lucky with the fire department being so close. They were randomly a couple miles away. Like where they would normally be is a lot further and they were driving by or something. So they were able to get there a lot faster. Otherwise, I don't know. I feel like without, definitely without everyone on the track, like the whole car would have been lost. Now, watching back the footage, uh, this kind of ties into our talking about um, the fire being slow and not this big engulfment of flames. Well, watching back the footage, one of the things that struck out to me, um, obviously having been in many driver's meetings, was why is she still in the car? Why is she still in the car? And I, I want to make sure you have a chance to explain that you didn't even realize the car was on fire. I think you thought the yeah. engine just blew or something. Do you want to like explain that? Yeah, so, well, first of all, I want to start by saying that I was being so nice to this car. One, because it was your car, I was paranoid about driving it anyway. I didn't want to mess with your car. I still wanted to have fun, but I was just babying the crap out of this car. Um, yeah, and I just started to push it a little bit when all this happened, and I was going from second into third gear. Like, I was not driving this car hard at all, and it was like my third time on track. So just for something to go wrong was mind-blowing to me. Um, and when it happened, at first, it was just a loud pop, and all I saw was white. So I didn't know if, like, a, a tire exploded in the rear or, or what. Like, it was, it was smoke from somewhere. I really had no idea because it was just a bang and then nothing else happened. So I pulled over, and as I was driving over, slowly, I saw flames in the rearview mirror. And that's when I knew that maybe, like, it was a brief, like, exhaust fire, and then it went away because it... I don't know, I thought it went away and I pulled over and the first thing I needed to do was call you because I was on the back side of the track and I didn't think anyone could see me. Like that was my biggest thing is that I just think I thought I was on my own. So I wanted to call you and I didn't know that the car was actually on fire or starting to fire underneath it until. Uh oh, we lost her. I really just thought something like exploded and went bang and then that was it, and there was kind of just like residual smoke from whatever had happened. It was all just very confusing because, again, I was not pushing the car. Yep. It was not, it was my third time out, and that's why it just like nothing made sense. And I pulled over probably slower than maybe I would have if I knew it was on fire, but I think I got to the side safely and out of everyone's way and not on the grass. So, in case anything was happening, like wouldn't catch everything else on fire. But yeah, I didn't know there was an actual fire happening. I just saw smoke and thought it was a residual until I got out of the car. And that's when I realized it was still on fire. And I feel like you thought I was exaggerating to begin with and that there was nothing really wrong. Um, yeah, I it just, it just sucks. I want to start off by saying uh, I know one of the things that she was the most shaken up at first was just constantly telling me over and over again like I was just being easy with a car, I wasn't driving it that hard and I just want to make sure it's like fully transparent to you and I know that it is to the viewers because I just edited this video. Um, there is no sort of driver error. It is 100% a mechanical failure. Uh, again, I don't know um, what the exact cause is, whether it's a actual defect or if it was negligence on the dealer that last installed the filter, but you can clearly see the oil pressure drop. I actually went and uh, enlarged the gauge, and you can see the oil pressure just slowly drop, and in the rearview mirror, you can see the flames from the oil just kind of hitting the exhaust, and the aerodynamics is pulling it backwards. Um, and yeah. it's it's very clear that you did not do anything wrong and uh, I just want to make sure you understand that no one's gonna be like she did this it's her fault <laughs> although I do want to say you know maybe there's a little bit of karma from all the negativity that you okay, kind of preached oh, about the Mustang that was, that was the other thing okay no that was the other huge thing that day oh uh, because 
you called me on your video for calling your car a Mustang. So then I just had to like rag on you more and call it a Mustang even more after that. So I was just always giving you crap about the car just for no reason. And then of course, like I burned it to the ground. Like it was just, it was not a good scenario. So it's like, of course this is going to happen. And then it's going to happen with the car that I like give him crap about and we joked about. And it was just, yeah, that was another thing that was like, really, this is happening. And I feel like even on the day of like, right after it happened, you were telling me about the previous time it came loose. And I think with you, you got lucky because it went on the rotors first and that he lost brakes. So you pulled over and noticed that the oil was leaking. Um, but I guess I didn't realize that you had had an incident at this track with that car right before, or maybe I would have thought that just happened. Like I thought it was all me and I didn't know what happened even though I was bathing the car and I mean, you, I don't know, you were really composed, which is also kind of freaking me out. It was like, oh my gosh, he's either so mad that he can't express it or it's really okay. I don't know. It was a lot of confusing emotions. And even if it was a defect or something that I can control, at the end of the day, I was still the one driving it. And even if I was babying the crap out of the car, I was still driving it when it caught on fire. So that sucked. Yeah, and uh, I definitely did not understand the intensity of the scenario when you initially called me because, yeah. I, you know, I, I haven't known Colette that long and, you know, a typical female thing to do would be to see like a little puff of smoke and then just assume that the cars burst into flames. So you called me in a rush. I think I was on the phone with Jamie and we were dialing in the tune on the Evo and I was having issues with my phone kept connecting to Bluetooth and you're screaming about the car and on you're fire. Like, why is she calling me? I'm so busy right now. I'm trying to get my tune right. No, 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 no. But I, I figured if you're calling me, that means it's already handled because if you're calling me to me, that means you're out of the car and like the situation's handled. Yeah. I didn't realize you're in a car that was about to get engulfed in flames. So I hopped in the Evo. It wasn't that intense. Engulfed, that's a big okay. word. Like, it was yeah, that's an exaggeration. And for me, I like, I for real thought no one could see me. So my biggest thing was like, holy crap, let me call you because you were over there like, in the pits and could get someone's attention. Mm -hmm. uh, the firm, they do have someone that's back but, behind like two turns mm -hmm. before it happened. I didn't like realize that at the time. And I just want to make sure someone saw me because this was the back section of the track. And yeah, I was just... I was freaking out and there's so many things going through my head from already like how you are with your cars. For everyone to know, I shut the GT3 RS hood like with my hand, no not the hood, like the front with my hands and this dude comes over and like wipes off my fingerprints. Oh don't okay, start the like, don't start the fingerprint game. You don't no, know I, what can I, of worms you're opening right now. I okay. Sure, it's a it's a thing. And it's a nice car. I'm like, let's be like extra about it. But I, you guys know I, what video she hasn't watched. It's okay. I don't expect you to watch all my videos because you don't like me. But yeah. anyway. Um. But like that's that's <laughs> how, that's in my head of how particular you are with all your cars, and it's really it's a great thing. But when I'm driving them, I'm gonna be extra cautious. And then for this to happen, it, it was just. It was not good. It's, it's not cool. Good. It's cool that I explained in the video as well because uh, a way that I often handle really bad situations like that, I try to laugh at them. I try to see the benefit of it. Um, you know, whether I smash up my car or something really bad happens, being upset or being angry just doesn't really do anyone any good. Um, and I realize you may have confused that for me, just like hiding in frustration with you. Like, surely it was a bummer. Um, but to be honest, uh, I, I don't know if I say this in the video or not, but I'm just, I'm glad out of any of the cars that it was one that I have the least uh, emotional attachment to, the least amount of time invested in. It really was just a pretty much stock GT350. Um, but, uh, well, and it's just another, like, I've been through a lot of crap with my own cars too. And like, I've been in wrecks during races and had a lot of intense stuff happen. Um, but the fact that it wasn't my car and it was someone else's, like, that's just what sucks even more. That's why now I'm so motivated to get all my own cars and we're going to go to the track day so I can drive really hard and it be mine and I'm not holding anything back. And if something happens, like, it's on me and I can handle it. But it being your car and just the one I would give you crap about and just, like, all those things added up, it was, it was, sucked. So I'm just... Yeah, I'm. We, there's actually a point. I don't think I got it on video, but there was a point when you're like, "This thing's going to get everything yep. that you want to keep out of the car." Like we thought the whole thing was going down, 
in massive flames and uh, luckily the fire department got there and um, all the staff at the firm were able to contain it until they did but there's definitely a point where i just thought it was going to be a gt350 bonfire like it was awful now we didn't uh properly document the actual situation how it occurred so we actually used every single fire extinguisher that the firm had so the car was still on fire and we had no fire extinguishers and that's about when the fire department showed up um yeah. also on top of that I don't think we really had a fuel fire. Obviously, whatever fuel is left in the you know fuel rail ignited, but the fuel in the actual fuel lines could have traced all the way back to the tank. Now, I don't know how hard that is, and the fact that the car was on E85 was huge for us because if there was 93 octane, we would have had a much more serious fire. If you guys aren't familiar, um, E85 is actually like kind of difficult to ignite. I've had E85 spray on my SR manifold before with a fuel rail that popped off and no fire happened. So I think that was definitely in our favor there um, and is the reason why what they'll see in tomorrow's video, um, I don't want to spoil it completely, but it's not as bad as we thought. Yeah. yeah, I think the fire just kept coming back alive from all the oil when it like splattered everywhere and then this the continued heat and then there was so much heat built up at one point that um, it just wouldn't go away and there was more oil continuing to drop and like start another fire. So. Um, it was not fun. Fire is bad and a little traumatic, but I have a hypothetical question for you. So, um, not completely Mustang related, but I just, I wanted an icebreaker because this has been a really like serious conversation. So do you know that like poopery spray that like people spray in the toilets sometimes? Oh yeah. That's that fancy girl uh -huh. in the commercials. Yeah. yeah. So if you had a clogged toilet and for whatever reason, the poopery spray fell into the clogged toilet. What would you do? Oh. It's a, it's a tough question. It may or may not have been a situation that occurred very, very recently. So I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious. Do you have something to tell us? What, no, there's, no I, I literally, I'm explaining the situation and how it occurred. And I'm curious what you would have done because I know what I did. And I don't know if it was the best decision. The bottle falls in the toilet and it's a clogged toilet. What do you do? <laughs> okay, now, now, is that an okay thing to do? That what, no, is that what, that's what you did, and you messed it up. Well, <laughs> now, that, now there's a bottle of poopery somewhere in my septic system, and I don't know what to do about it. Called it. Called it. You just were like, screw it. So, oh. well, I mean, what would you have done? That's what I want to know. You would have flushed it, right? I mean, let's sure, let's just go with that. I, that's definitely what you did. No, I'm not asking you what I did. I'm asking you what you would have done. I mean, I guess it's just, yeah, it's a weird question. But it, I'm sure it's happened to some people before. It happened to you, so. Exactly, you know. There you go. I'm just a normal human being over here. So my very last question for you, and I'll feel free to, you know, chime in if you have any other stuff you want to discuss. Um, the Mustang is up on the lift. Now, I know I've discussed some of my top secret plans with you, but uh, if you didn't know what I was planning, what would you do in this situation with that car and uh, where it stands? Would you part it out? Would you swap it? Would you make it a drift car, a drag car? Would you sell it, burn it, crash it? What would be your method of choice for what's remains? Um, I don't know, a drift car would be fun. Um, well, you never told me how like the whole front clip, if it's good or not, like if it needs a bunch of like welding or structural damage was done. I don't know what the shape of it was in, but drift car would be fun. And I want to have like a Phoenix theme where it's like rising from the ashes and make it all intense. That'd be cool. Interesting. Phoenix. Yeah. Is that what a Phoenix does? It rises from the ashes? I think so. It's like some mystical bird thing, right? Yeah. I just think of the band. No. Phoenix. It's okay. All right. Do you have anything else you want to say before I turn the camera off and go home? Because it is 2 a.m. in the morning right now and I'm tired. I'm um, sorry I burned your car to the ground. Oh. Stopped. Big question. What do you think I should title this video? You guys need to know. You guys need to know what she wants me to title the video. They don't even know. Well, no, because they're going to think that I'm just using you for views when in reality oh. it was your idea. Um, I mean, 
Oh, you were, were thinking you were thinking about yeah. you were thinking about the other title that we talked about, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. No, not that one. The other one. Yeah, I was like, why are you why are you asking me that right no, now? No, 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 no. We'll save that for another video. We'll save that for later. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Now it's coming back to me. I'm I'm there processing that I just burned this car to the ground. Okay, it's like really hitting me hard, and it's his car, and I'm kind of freaking out on the inside. And you had us take thumbnail photos. You did that. So we have, I think I sent them to you. Uh-huh. I'm remembering that. That's... Why is that messed up? You were filming the whole time. You were vlogging. So yeah. me, me getting thumbnail because photos like, is, that's the only filming I did, though. Like, I literally didn't film anything. I would have had zero footage from the fire if you weren't being a good vlogger. I know. Well, it was, I didn't know what else to do. I thought I was, I thought the whole car was going in the ground. I'm like, well, the least I can do is get it on footage for you. But yeah, I think we ended up taking thumbnails at some point. No, we so. did. You did a great job, by the way. Um, I, you know, I've been looking for a uh, video filmer and editor, and I have to say, you are a much prettier Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. I got to be honest with you. So uh, would you like a job here at uh, LZMFG? Um... Maybe, I guess that means I'd have to come out to Florida. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll think about it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can I get back to us. Anyway, like later this week or next week. So. Oh, later this no. week. It, it, could, it could work oh. out. To oh, oh so. okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'll, right. uh, if I happen to be in town, mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll hit you up. All right. Well, uh, I'll have your office ready. Okay. Thanks. All right, guys. So uh, a big thank you to Colette for joining us and uh, you know letting us hear her side of the story. Thank you for maintaining your composure and also for allowing me to upload this video. As I know, it was a very traumatic experience for you, and I want to make sure you know that uh, I'm appreciative. So. Yeah. But, no um, problem. Thank you, and uh, I hope you look forward to watching tomorrow's video at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we will be dismantling the remains of the car that you burned to the ground. Bye, Colette. What? <laughs> Got her. Now, if you are a GT350 owner and you're watching this video, I want to strongly urge you to make sure maybe when you check your oil or if you ever do a track day or something, just put a hand on your oil filter, make sure it's tight. Or if you're very worried about it, there is an option from Ford. It's an upgraded cartridge style filter. I think it's about $500 for the kit to convert your car to cartridge style that came in the later model year GT350s because this is only an early model thing. And then you can never have to worry about this issue happening to your car. Just food for thought. So again, this was like kind of a tough video to make. Definitely upsetting. I, I will be honest and fully transparent with you guys. If this were to happen to any of the cars, I'm glad it was this one. I have the least amount of um, kind of nostalgia, the least amount of effort and time and customization into this car compared to any of the other ones. But I am kind of, I don't want to say excited, but uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with this. I don't know if the engine will be salvageable, if the chassis will be salvageable, but I really want to hear what you guys think I should do. Uh, it's going to be hard to say until we start pulling into it tomorrow, but I would love to save this chassis and do something special with it and I just I don't know we shall see but um I don't want to say I hope you guys enjoyed this video because it's like kind of a rough video but I do hope this shed a little light on where the GT350 has been this big news we've been alluding to and I hope you guys are as excited as I am to pull this thing apart and see what we can do with it